The Incident is a film that is staggering, and I find myself obsessed with it, maybe in a somewhat unhealthy way. I'm fascinated by it um, from a perverse standpoint because it's a downright intense and uncomfortable film to watch. But I think what fascinates me about it is the way that human nature is played out and the really deeply disconcerting sides of human nature that come out of people, no matter how quote unquote good they think that they are or that they may appear to be to us. There is a rawness that is captured, an absolute rawness captured in this film that is undeniable and in your face, claustrophobic and so truthful and stark in that black and white. It's a film that I find myself thinking about a lot. One of the things I find about the film is that people are presented as mirror images of each other and usually across generations. You've got a mix of younger and older people in the subway car that is terrorized by these two white male thugs. And what is interesting to me about this whole scenario is that not one person really stands up to these thugs until it's almost too late. There's some shouts, there's some refrains, but generally speaking, people are just sitting awestruck, paralyzed, if you will, for lack of a better word, as spectators. It's something like the bystander theory. The more people you can find in a group who witness an atrocity, the less likely it will be that they will stand up and take a stand and do something. Whereas the fewer people there are in a group, the more likely one of those few will stand up and do something. Because implicit in the bystander theory is that with more people, an assumption amongst that group is that someone else in the group will take charge and stand up. The incident is titled that way because it is open-ended as to which incident, which opportunity someone could have taken to take a stand. And that's why the film's title is as it is. I don't think it refers to these two violent people at all. These violent people are an extension of the human nature that lies within the 14 other people who sit silently, relatively speaking, on that subway car in New York City at around 3 a.m. in the morning on a Sunday. As I said, this generational thing, these mirror images of people, a younger couple across the way from an older couple. I mean, is that what the younger couple became? The older couple across from them on that subway train? It's very revealing. Very revealing indeed. It says perhaps that we do not change generally as human beings. I think the incident says that. And it suggests perhaps that we are not as good as we think we are. There's some very frightening things that are revealed in this movie. And it seems that these two thugs reveal all of them. Not that I thank them for doing so, but that they are perhaps people who actually expose the 14 people on that car as the frauds that they appear to be, even though the two thugs are the most violent. I do not think that they are the worst offenders in any way, shape or form in this film. There's no question about it. No question about it whatsoever that the incident demands every second of your time. This 1967 film, directed by Larry Pierce, is definitely a must-see.
as uncomfortable and as disturbing as it is. I'm Omar Moore.